Hey yo, word on the street is that you want to become an official resident of LJV. This is the place for women's wrestling figure reviews. All you need to do is hit subscribe below Chico and while you're at it, head on over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash LumberJoeville and represent your colors of pink, white, and yellow to become an official member of the Fig Click. Hey listen, the girls have been rescued, the pack is back and ready to attack. We got me, Razor Aron. We got Jilly Wood, Diva Marie. And we got Big Lexi, Comer Alexa. Oh, I swallowed my toothpick. So what are you waiting for? Hit subscribe below, leave a comment, like the video, and head on over to Pro Wrestling T slash Number Joeville to represent your true colors. You know why? Because LJV is for life. So... Tell me what you think, Mayor Stacy. Did you like it? I appreciate the effort in tying the commercial into today's Britt Baker figure that is wearing Scott Hall-inspired gear, but don't you think it's a bit of a cheap, shameless plug? Yeah, you're kind of right about that. It is kind of cheap. Oh, I think we just need to refilm it, but in 4K! That's not what I meant. No, I think I know exactly what you meant. Because we actually took a town survey... And you know what? Survey says Mayor Stacy approves. I'm gonna go gather the girls to film. Boop! Oh, sorry. I do love them, but being mayor of LJV might be more exhausting than I thought. Welcome to Lumber Jailville. Women's wrestling lives here. And welcome to today's review of AEW Unrivaled Series 10 Dr. Britt Baker DMD. Now, is this the best Britt figure that we've gotten so far? We'll find out here in a couple moments once we open it up. It is important to note that she does have a Supreme figure coming out. And that looks amazing. But in my opinion, this one looks good too. But without further ado, let's take a closer look at this figure starting with the packaging. All right, so I've mentioned it before on the channel, but I'm going to say it again. I absolutely love and admire the packaging here that we get with the AEW Jazz figures. The Unrivaled line here, we get the gold and black theme, and then the Unmatched is a silver, black, and blue theme. And in my opinion, it's just the best packaging out there, not just with the wrestling figures, but action figures in general. I mean, so much so that I actually started collecting MOC. Obviously, I'm always going to open my figures, review them for all of y'all, and display them loose. But I've been ordering extra of the women AEW figures because displaying them almost MOC is just, I don't know, it's just a beautiful little collection there. I think the packaging's great. Now taking a closer look at this Brit figure in specific here, we have her name on the side, we have Brit holding that title on the front, and obviously we have the open bubble with the figure. Now this figure has gotten some critiques as far as how big that title is. Now this is the first time we're getting that second incarnation of the women's championship so once we open it up we'll take a closer look but for now let's look at the package here number 83 series 10 we have her on the side 
Moving it around here, they did a good job here with that little simulated autograph, especially compared to that Jade Cargill figure. The back of the Jade box was a mess. That autograph and the date was wrong in the attire on the back, but here they did a good job, and obviously we got that awesome picture of the beautiful Britt Baker there looking B.A. as always. Then we have the rest of the line. Now, with that being said, I'm going to open this box. I haven't been able to open a box without massacring it, so we're going to cut away and then come back. AEW Unrivaled Series 10, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. This attire is from Double or Nothing 2021, which took place on May 30th in Jacksonville, Florida. On this night, Britt Baker would defeat Hikaru Shida to become the new AEW World Women's Champion. Alright, so my first impressions of this figure, I mean, they definitely put a lot of detail into this figure. I think this figure looks awesome. I can't wait to take a closer look at the face, at the attire, and also do a little figure comparison between this figure, also her Unmatched Series 1, and then that Blood and Guts Ringside exclusive. We're going to do a comparison later in the review, but so far, just looking at a distance, this looks like Britt's best figure. Now, the first thing we're going to do is cover accessories. She does come with extra hands. Doing the little point down sign there, the DMD hands there, and that's nice. I wish we did get a glove hand, a black hand, you know, that we could have her do the lockjaw with. But, either way, we're going to talk about the most controversial accessory that she comes with, and that's this AEW World Women's Championship. Now, I, I'm kind of torn on this, okay, because there's a lot of good about this, but there's also a lot of head-scratching decisions. So, it is important to note that this is the second incarnation of the Women's Championship. You know, if you look at what the title looks like now, it looks very classy, kind of more square pattern. But this was the second incarnation that I believe was gifted to Hikaru Shida, or they changed it and give, gave it to Hikaru after she celebrated 365 plus days as Women's Champion. And I believe the very next day, Britt defeated her and won this. So that's kind of kind of funny. They gave her a new championship and then Britt won it. I kind of thought that Britt was going to win it after they made a new championship. But, you know, it, this does have a lot of detail there, especially when you compare it to the other one. You know, I mean, obviously it's a lot bigger. And it is important to note that that second incarnation of the AEW Women's Championship was bigger. Was it this much bigger? No, it was not that noticeably bigger. But I'm thinking they made it bigger so that they could actually add the details properly. Because if you look close at this title, the detail is pretty tremendous. And that was one of my complaints with this title is it's, it just looks bad. I mean, look, it looks cheap. It looks like a dollar store title. It's like embossed and kind of mushed together. All the letters are just bleh. It's It's just not a good looking championship in my opinion. I think this... It's probably the worst women's championship that was released um, in wrestling figure form. In my opinion, I just think it looks crappy. But we get this, and this looks like the legit thing. I mean, this looks amazing. Now, with all that good aside, it is way too big, right? Now, this second incarnation should be a little bigger than the first, but it's like triple the size. And on top of that, it's just a big belt. You know, if you put it around Britt's waist and you look at the fastens, even if you have it as tight as it can go, it's still extremely big. And I'll show you that later when we take this jacket off and everything. Like, it's weird. It's almost like it's a men's strap. I mean, obviously, it's a uniquely molded strap, but still, it's like made for a men's figure, but it's a women's championship. So I think they were on the right path here as far as detailing goes, but it's just way too freaking big. Now, besides that, Britt obviously comes with this really cool rubber jacket accessory. You know, this is Scott Hall inspired gear with this outsiders look and the, the paint drip, the blood drip there. I mean, it's, it's perfect. I'm so glad they made this in figure form. And this jacket does not allow her a whole lot of movement and articulation, but that's kind of what you expect with these rubber type jackets here. It does have a lot of detailing, though. We have the Britt Baker logo on the back with the silver dots around it. We also have that blood or the paint drip going down there. And even on the front here, we have a nice detailed zipper. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Now, as far as how hard it is to take off, well, that's what I am here to show y'all. It, it doesn't come off very easily, I guess. Let's see here. Probably need to pop the hands off realistically. I don't think I'm going... Yeah, I'm going to pop the hands off. Okay, let's pop the hands off. 
and try to take the jacket off that way because that's probably the easiest way. Okay. Now it is a thicker type rubber. It's very similar to uh, her first figure in the line. So we'll put the hands on later. So yeah, this jacket, it's definitely nice. It, it's detailed uh, pretty extremely. You know, they did a great job here. Now let's take a closer look at the actual figure itself. All right, so moving on to the face scan, face sculpt, and that hair sculpt. In my opinion, this is by far the best job they've ever done. Now, obviously, like I mentioned, there's a Supreme figure coming out in the future. But as far as what we have out there right now, this is by far the best. For some reason, a lot of people online that saw images aren't too impressed with it and they think it looks weird. But in my opinion, it looks spot on. I mean, starting with that hair sculpt, that hair sculpt is so iconic to her. It even had some braids on the top there. But that kind of high ponytail in the back that comes down, it, it's perfect. So iconic to her character. And the face here is right on. I mean, it's spot on in my opinion. Now, obviously, where they made a big mistake in her first release figure, which we'll cover here in a little bit when we do a comparison, is they didn't include any eye shadow or any eye makeup. And it looks weird. Especially now, it doesn't look a thing like Brit. At the time, I think I was a little forgiving on it. But looking at this, like, this looks just like a Brit. I, I think it's tremendous. They definitely gave her that dark eye shadow up there. And she even has a little heelish smirk. And, yeah, I, I mean, I can't say enough good about this figure in person. I just think it looks tremendous as far as the face goes. And, yeah, I, I'm a big fan. So now let's move on to that body sculpt and the attire. All right, so the first thing I noticed when I removed that jacket accessory is Brit has an updated body sculpt, and that's something I couldn't tell by pictures online, but I am so pleasantly surprised because I've mentioned this before with her Unmatched Series 1 figure, and even if you go look at Unrivaled 1, Brandy Rhodes, a lot of those early women's AEW figures, um, they're weird. They look like aliens. They look like Martians. It looks like whoever designed them has never seen a female body before. I mean, they're just bizarre looking figures, and we will do a comparison here, and I can show you what I mean. But we did get an updated torso here, and even the lower half, as we'll get to. Now, this midsection might be reused from the recent Thunder Rosa figure, but here's the thing with AEW and Jazzwares, is when they do reuse parts, it makes sense. It does make sense, and it looks good, right? They never just reuse parts to reuse parts with the women's figures. And for the most part, if you look at the last year and a half of women's figure releases by AEW and Jazzwares, They've given the women so much uniqueness, and a lot of them have their very own unique body sculpts that can only be used for them, and that really does make these figures like little mini statues. I mean, I can't say enough good, and I think that's something that gets overlooked, is how much attention to detail they put into these sculpts of these women's figures, and how they try to make them unique. And yeah, this torso here might be reused from the Thunder Rosa, but it fits here on the Brit. It does. And obviously we have a Supreme figure coming out in the future, so we'll get to that. But I was so pleasantly surprised when I saw that we did have an updated torso. Now, looking at that top here, it is a sculpted on top that we have seen in her previous figures here. Mine, mine might have been printed on a little bit off. You can see the flesh-colored uh, sculpting underneath. So I'll take that as mine being printed on a little off here. But either way, there's a lot of paint detail here. We have the black base color with the paint drip or the blood drip there. We have the Britt Baker logo. And something that's really cool is if you look at the border of that top on the bottom, and then you look at the border of the top of the bottoms here, that's a tongue twister, it's like a snakeskin type pattern. And like that's such a little detail that I wouldn't have thought they'd include, and they did. And that's it's just a beautiful thing that they did that. I, I freaking love that. I love the little detailing. Now, looking at the fingernails, they are painted red. That's also a nice little detail. And then she has these leg sleeves going down that are painted on with that red blood drip or paint drip pattern there to represent Scott Hall. And we got a little Britt Baker logo on the boots. Now, these bottoms are painted on with that uh, drip, but she does, but <laughs> I didn't mean that. She does have a different sculpt here. Okay, now. We are going to do a little side-by-side -side comparison, but I'll show you real quick what I mean. So obviously, you know, when they first released the Brit figures, let me get the actual unmatched one. Like like I said, it looks like the 
designer had never seen a female body. It's just weird and proportion. It looks like an alien. And here they, they updated it. We'll say that, right? Now, I don't think Brit wears bottoms that are ever that revealing. But either way, I think it's a lot more accurate. You know, I, I think it does give a lot more character to this figure and does make it a lot more accurate. And that's what I think I love about the women's figures in the AEW Jazz Wars line is they have so much character and so much uniqueness to them. And I just think they're they're beautiful works of art. And these these women are amazing and they deserve to have figures that are like that. So yeah, I mean, I'm so blown away and so pleasantly surprised by the attire and the body sculpt on this figure. Like I can't say enough. Now, let's compare this to some of her previous figures. All right, so now we're going to do a little figure comparison here. Now, truth being told, I love doing these segments. They, I have a lot of fun doing them. And this is basically where I take the current superstar that we're reviewing today, and I compare that to their previous releases, right? Sometimes I pick and choose if they've had a lot. Or for Brit, in this case, you know, I have them all right in front of me. Now, it is important to note that that Blood and Guts ringside exclusive does come with bloody heads. So it has multiple heads included. But I'm not going to show you all all the different variations because I did do a full in-depth review on that figure so check that out and she also does have a rare figure or a chase some might call it one out of three thousand an unmatched one and i actually do have that i've never publicly shared that but i do have that i got in a trade so i'll show you that here in a minute but on the way left here we have the unmatched series one brit in the middle we have that ringside exclusive blood and guts and on the right we obviously have unrivaled series 10 and honestly i could end the segment and say Easy choice, Unrivaled 10, see ya, and then move on. But I'll show you why. Because, yeah, in, in my opinion, that Unrivaled 10 is leaps and bounds and miles uh, better than the others, honestly. And starting off with her unmatched Series 1 debut figure here, yeah, I mean... I think when I reviewed it, I, I said it does look like her. It's just missing that eyeshadow, And that was the biggest thing that it was missing. And on top of that, it does have that generic female body where the belly button's like way too high. It's just disproportioned. And like I said, it looks like the designer has never seen a female before. It just looks weird. It just looks really, really weird. So yeah, not a huge fan of that figure. Now, speaking of eye makeup, they took that scan and they added eyeshadow here. And I think they did a tremendous job with that Brit. You know, the face sculpt is good. It, it's it's okay. And the eyeshadow looks good. The hair sculpt's cool. I love that silver attire that she came in with the red and black. I think that's so sharp looking. And she did come with some bloody heads that I, I don't display her with those because I think my daughter would have nightmares. But either way, that's definitely a cool ringside exclusive. I can't advise it enough. But she still has kind of that bizarre shaped body. Then we move on to Unrivaled 10, and this is, in my opinion, my my opinion, it's leaps and bounds better than the others. I think everything from the face, the iconic hair, the attire, the body sculpt, the, the whole nine yards. I mean, it's, it's tremendous in my opinion. And even like my complaint with the boots on her previous two figures released is they were, they look like moon boots. And I was doing a little comparison and it does look like they might have narrowed the toe down a little bit. I don't know, maybe it's just my eyes, but the, the boots look fine in the Unrivaled 10, I should say. So yeah, that's this is definitely the best Brit figure out there. By far, in my opinion, if you're looking to add a Brit to your collection, get this one, even more so than the Blood and Guts. But I did say I would show you all this. This is the rare version. I did get this in a trade. Let's turn that light off there. I did get this in a trade there, and I, I love it. You know, I've actually decided I'm going to start a Britt Baker shelf, just like I have a Bliss shelf, I have a Becky shelf, a Sasha shelf. Britt's getting her own shelf, especially because she has so many multiple heads that I can combine and really make some cool figures. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, this is the unmatched one, so the face isn't the best, but this is definitely one of the coolest chases, in my opinion, or rares, in my opinion. All right, as far as articulation goes, she can look down. Amazing, look at that. That's as good as the Jade Cargill. You know, Jade Cargill, really good range of motion with her head and neck. She can look right real well. Look and look left real well. And she can look up slightly there. Shoulder is on a ball joint here, and it does have that nice jazz wears little feeling where it does kind of feel like it locks into place. So that's really nice. We have double jointed elbows. We have that upper torso swivel that can really bend sideways really well. But it doesn't flex forward or back that great. She has a swivel at the waist. She has a hip on a ball joint that can go in all different directions. It is a little inhibited by the cheeks there, to be honest with you. She has an upper thigh swivel. She has double jointed knees. She has an upper boot swivel. And then 
The foot can planar flex and dorsiflex up. And here's one last look at AEW Unrivaled Series 10, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. So overall, I give AEW Unrivaled Series 10, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, an overall score of a 9.5 out of 10. Now, I know that seems high. And this figure hasn't exactly been getting a lot of, I guess, publicity online or a lot of love online. But I'm telling you, it, it, this figure's tremendous. It really is. And what I absolutely love about Britt Baker, I'm a big fan of her in the first place, but I love that AEW and Jazzwares is including her in multiple lines multiple times a year. You know, WWE needs to do that. They might be doing that with Becky in the future. That's a whole nother subject. But Britt is the face of the women's division in AEW, whether you like it or not. I like it, you know. But it's finally nice to have a figure that truly does represent her from head to toe. The face sculpt, the face scan, the hair sculpt, the attire. And something I didn't cover is even that little molded jacket accessory is completely different and unique compared to the first jacket that came out in that Unmatched Series 1. That's a longer jacket. I didn't do a little comparison in the video. But either way, I mean, this figure is tremendous. And all I can say is that Supreme figure has its work cut out for it honestly it's going to take a lot for that figure to overtake this one in my opinion i love this figure it's tremendous thanks for stopping by lumber Joeville. women's wrestling lives here for a first look at all future women's wrestling figures make sure to hit subscribe and become an official resident of ljv today also hit thumbs up hit that like and help the video out now stay tuned, there are some really exciting videos coming out. Elite Series 95 Shotzi is almost to LJV. Now look for that review either Sunday night or Monday um, because I am going to SummerSlam and StarCast with The Treasurer. So also look for those videos, I'm super stoked. And as far as the Shotzi goes, I did order multiple, so I am going to be doing a giveaway. Stay tuned to the Lumberjillville Instagram and I'll post details. Now, that being said, thank you so much for stopping by and watching today's video, and I hope to see y'all soon. Have a great night, y'all.